With just a few weeks left for the state of Nagaland to go for general elections and political parties declaring their list of candidates, political drama in the state has unfurled. In a jolt to the Janata Dal uni United, the party, state and district office bearers resolved to resign en masse, alleging dictatorial leadership of the state president, NSN Lota. Their resignation was announced today at the press conference held at Hotel Saramati in Dimapur. It may be noted that party secretary general Kitoho S. Rotoka, who is one among the resigning members, is the intending candidate from Gaspanitu. The members allege self-styled leadership of the president, adding that there is no transparency and no appreciation for participant input in the party, which has further created huge communication gap among the party workers. Reacting on the allegations, NSN Lotha, while exclusively speaking to Hornbill TV, said that if the allegations are true, the party can terminate him and take disciplinary actions against him. Let's listen to the conversation with Lotha. David rejoinder, I believe, because uh, in a party, it is also the prerogative of the high command whether to allot party symbol or not. Okay. Mr. Kito, despite declaring him as a party candidate, mm -hmm. since he was indulging in anti-party activities, okay. the party high command had decided not to allot him party ticket. That is why he has decided to resign. Okay. But as far as resignation is concerned, it, is, it was only on the paper, and his resignation has not reached uh, this very office. Okay, so, since his resignation did not reach, it is also mean to say that he's still with the party, and, the, and thereof, the party has expelled him. Okay, okay. Uh, mm. So, there may, there may be confusion that when he has resigned, how can he be expelled? Mm, yes. But the verbal resignation does not work in a party. Yes. He must submit an official resignation letter. But even without submitting like that, since he was indulging in this kind of activities, the party has decided to expel him. Mm. Mm. Right, so sir, that is, okay, sir, yeah. sir, if he has been expelled and, and since he is a candidate for Kaspani too, does that mean that there will be uh, no another ticket. candidate? Uh, as, of, as of now, it will depend uh, whether any other uh, formidable candidates will seek the party ticket or not. Okay. And if we get any formidable uh, candidates uh, seeking for party ticket, we will consider the candidature. Okay, sir. So also uh, about the allegations that have been made against you, do you have any uh, clarifications to make or what do you have to say about all, all the allegations made against you, sir? Yes. Those, those allegations are true, I leave it to the party high command to terminate me here with, as I have no uh, moral ground to hang on, and I leave it to the party high command to take disciplinary action against me if the allegations are true. So also the viewers are a little uh, confused about uh, the case where uh, the resigning members have said that uh, Mr. Im was, uh, the meeting was headed under him. Uh, also, with, and also with the communique saying that the central communique saying that he was not present. So we also wanted a clarification regarding that, sir. When when the resignation was discussed, he was not there. Uh, as far as Im Mumbai is concerned, he wasn't a part of the resignation discussion. Therefore, he has every reason to say that he was not a part of the uh, team conspiring uh, to go against the party and indulging in anti-party activities. So also with the upcoming election, uh, the sudden uh, resignation of all these members will be a jolt to the party. So what, is the, uh, what, what are the further steps that uh, the party is planning to take? These very party functionaries were only confined to Kaspanitu. Most of them are from Kaspanitu and right from the time they were appointed without approval, they have been working only in one constituency. Therefore, it will have no effect on the party except on that very constituency where they have been working.
Now again in a drastic U-turn, the central body of the Janata Dal United has termed the resolution as unauthorized and not applicable. The central body in its notification has alleged that the Feb 2 meeting was not headed by the General Secretary Im Simong Bapongan as claimed by the resigning members and the letter is still a part of the JDU Nagaland. The central body went on to allege that except for the Secretary General Kitoho S. Rotoka, the other so-called state executive does not have the approval of the JDU National Office and therefore called their appointments invalid and bogus. The central body of the JDU expelled Rotoka from the party and condemned his alleged anti-party activities. Now to discuss on this matter, we'll be joined by our colleague El Nguli from the newsroom. Hi El, can you hear me? I uh, too, I can hear you, yeah. Right, so El, uh, mm -hmm. this is, a, we could term this as a jolt to the Janata Dal unit and since all the parties are declaring their uh, final list of candidature, so what is the possible impact of this uh, controversy on the electoral chances of the JDU? Yeah, it was uh, very surprising that this event came about just when the state was about to start polling. And these events are actually not really surprising if you consider the political climate of the state and the way things have been working. I think uh, in a way that we are not really shocked by these events because when you are talking about electoral gains, you're, you're talking about a lot of stake in it. Uh, I think uh, we were not really expecting that this kind of an upheaval would ha happen. But uh, definitely it will have an impact on his image because when you are a newcomer into the arena, of course JDU is not new, but in the state of Nagaland, JDU has yet to establish his foothold. So when you are a newcomer in that sense, when you are young and when you don't have that much of an established base for mandate in the electorate, then what you do is, uh, what, what, what you, do is uh, you try to put your best foot forward. But in the case of the JDU, I think they, they started out on a little wrong footing there and it might affect their image because people will think, oh, they're new and they don't have MLAs and they're joining the elections. They're trying to get a mandate of the people, but even before the election started, they have already done something wrong or something is already wrong in the party. So that is the kind of image that the electorate is going to have to. Also, if uh, it was really true that the leadership was uh, mismanaging the party or was being incompetent, what could be the reason that this issue is uh, being brought up only now? What do you oh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, like, like I said before. I think this uh, this is something that's not very um, unusual in the electoral circles here, especially for any state that is going to the elections. Uh, first thing, uh, here we should know that it's not just about uh, political parties engage in stakeholding activities. They are not just activities that uh, that focuses on getting the mandate of the people. It's it's also interpolitical, intercandidature, and of course uh, inter uh, community stakeholding activities. So uh, it is it is it is also an opportunity. Frankly, it's also an opportunity for vested interests. It could be from the community, it could be from the party workers, it could be within the political organization itself, that there would be vested interest. I'm not saying that those rebels in the JDU, they were, uh, they were uh, putting up this mutiny just because uh, you know, they had no other grievance than to break away from the organiza uh, organization. I'm not saying that. What I am saying here is that Elections also give opportunity to different different interests and sections of the political party to come up and air their opinions, to claim their interests, their visions, so that so uh, they're, they're using these elections to also air their grievances. We don't know, we haven't heard much from the JDU at this moment, but they're taking this opportunity to air a grievance uh, uh, that, that will garner more media space. Moving on, El, uh, we'd also want to know, will, will the party denouncing the rebel statement and reported meeting affect the outcome of the JDU in its fight against the PJP in the constituency? Um, like I said, I think the most immediate impact that will be, uh, that will be booted from the uh, JDU, uh, J JDU upheaval right now is its image, of course. Like I said before, it's going to give them an image of being a party that's not really uh, responsible, that's not really strong, and that's not really reliable. So that's the first impact. But 
in, in terms of electorate base there, I think it might not really have an impact because when you talk of 37-2 constituency assembly in Woka district, it is the passion of uh, Deputy Chief Minister Yantungo Patan here. Uh, the constituency has three ranges, namely uh, Inland Range, Chikitung Range, and then uh, what is Niroyo Range. These are the three ranges. So one, uh, one contender that recently joined Yantungo Patan uh, was Sankiting Yantan. So this person Niro, uh, Niro, from the Niroyo constituency joined the Deputy Chief Minister, which means the Deputy Chief Minister had only one person to fight. That was St. Jumo uh, Lotha of the JDU. So in terms of electorate base, I think it won't change much for the JDU. We don't know. Miracles could happen. Something big could happen that, you know, a very small party could suddenly have its own candidate in, uh, its own candidate on the pedestal in the Nagaland Legislative Assembly. We don't know. Things could turn around fast. But for now, what we know is that it wouldn't change the electorate, electorate fortunes of the PJB because that's where the Deputy Chief Minister has been elected three times in a row. Lastly, uh, we'd also want to know how do you think, you know, or how can the JDU work out the, uh, its electoral chances from this image issue, which might have uh, given an impression of weakness or unreliability to the electors? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think the whole point here is that they have projected themselves as an unreliable uh, and a weak and a little disorganized uh, party here because it happened at a time when they should be showing a face of unity to the electorate. But uh, anyway, I think they have already started damage control in here. They are only already putting out press releases and they are also refuting each other. Of course, that's also part of the damage control going on here. So that is only as much as they can do now. Uh, what they can do right now is to, I think, get in touch with their voting base and maybe try to explain it to them because uh, I think the BJP game in Woka 3070 Assembly is already celebrating that. Their biggest contender, their biggest opponent there in the Assembly constituency is already breaking up and they're already mired in controversy. Atu. All right, I think that's all about uh, all for today. El, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Atu. Right. Mentioned this is a big jolt for the JDU. The person who was alleged the president of the JDU is yet to release his uh, official statement and also sources have informed that central members of the JDU might be in the state now. I think that's about all.